Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new session of the Continuous Testing Meetup. Um, usually, Diego is the host, but today his internet connection is not the best, so I will take over. And he will, he's still around, but he's not hosting today. Um, first, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, the last session is uh, online now. So if you missed uh, last month's um, session with Marie, Marie Drake, then you can go to our website and um, check out the video there. Uh, today, we also don't have a, a five minute uh, ICQB vocabulary with Aksana. So without further ado, let me, into, let me introduce to Kai, um, who will talk about automation and test today. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Uh, I will start to share my screen. So, so now the screen. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. So, so yeah. So fine. Um, yeah. Um, hello. My name is Kai Krebenstein. I work for the Card Size Digital Innovation in Dresden, and I also prepared no uh, ICQB vocabulary today, but I didn't know. So uh, Aksana didn't told me. So, uh, so yeah. But but I yeah so now I'm a little bit confused. I don't remember anything about I think be vocabulary. Maybe I have yeah, to be about. okay. But but today it's uh, my topic. My talk is about uh, automation and testing, and it's not test automation. Uh, it's a talk about uh, how to simplify your daily testing business because um, we are testers. We also, a lot of my colleagues, as we have um, our card size digital innovation, is about 340 uh, employees and uh, 60 uh, testers in our company, in our business unit. And um, a lot of these colleagues are, yeah, so called um, in Deutsch, uh, Quereinsteiger, in English, yeah, so career changers. So we have, uh, so they are not. They have some IT background, but not all of them. And so, uh, so you know, testing is a little bit human driven manual driven so uh, we have a lot of things to do we have uh, we, our goal is to find bugs but uh, we have a lot of other things to do like report creation uh, test data to find to collect and to provide and to anonymous uh, yeah, to create test data and um, all these are things uh, they so yeah see yeah, they stop us from making also doing the right things like bug, bug finding. And the idea of uh, it's automation and testing, it's um, it's not my idea, it's the idea from Richard Bradshaw and Mark Winteringham. It's to uh, to automate all these boring stuff, all these things, also like the automation testing is the mindset and namespace that promotes human-centric autom uh, human centric automation within the context of testing and uh, uh, automation and testing focus on strategy, creation, usage, and education of uh, yeah, automation that totally supports our testing activities. It means we, have, we want to automate all these boring stuff, all this uh, stuff, or this task uh, that keep us away from bug finding, uh, like reporting and so on. And today I want to share with you uh, some experience, some good practices we found uh, during our, in our projects, in our Scrum projects, in our testing services. Also, we providing, also uh, our company provides, um, yeah, we provide full Scrum teams for individual software development, and uh, we offer teams and colleagues. Um, for individual test services, and uh, within these projects, uh, we found a, yeah we found some solutions, some good practices to show you examples for this automation and testing. And uh, let's start. Um, Severin, Seth, where you come from? Very well, your company. Uh, my your company, company? Yeah, yeah, it's called Reply, and it's like. All over yeah. Europe, but mostly okay, yeah, yeah. from Milan. I see, I see. So because, um, like for Diego, uh, because um, the first step is uh, these are good practices based on tools, and um, I show you some. I will show you and name some tools today. Um, but there are other tools. These are only examples to show the good practices. Yeah, there are other tools. I will try to. A name uh, alternatives tools and alter alternative solutions, but uh, I don't want to promote these tools. I get no money. Uh, that's only yeah. I have to use some tools for the example. So uh, especially 
uh, 0.6 up later. So, yeah. So let's start. Um, the first one, the first example, good practice is a screen to give. And I told you, they are a lot, we have uh, to do a lot of things during testing. And um, one of these things are bug tracking. We have to find, uh, we, we, found, uh, we found a bug during our test sessions in a classical waterfall V model based or agile project. Um, and um, if you're an agile project, yeah, you have the chance if you found a bug as a tester, you could uh, scream to the, uh, or go to the developer, dance a little bit around and say, yeah, I found a bug, yeah, cool, take a look at it. Or maybe you're a little bit far away and have no chance to speak directly to your colleague. So you have to note this uh, issue um, in a bug tracking tool. And the typical way is here yeah, to write down, or not the best way is to write, it doesn't work. It's maybe a little bit too, yeah, it doesn't help uh, during the bug analyzing and the bug fixing. So you write down, you know, uh, where do you found it? What are the tasks to reproduce? What was the tool? What was the time? Uh, what was, was the environment and so on. And you create, and, and when you write down the task to reproduce this bug, uh, you start to create some screenshots. And so you have to create a screenshot before, a screenshot afterwards, and, and so on. And one idea as a, to support this thing, it's um, or to yeah, to optimize this uh, this task is to, to use a screen capturing tool. And uh, but screen capturing tool uh, with the output file as a video file, for example, it's not a good idea because as Seth told me, uh, he's working with a MacBook. If he start to create some uh, videos on a MacBook and try to push these to the, or to uh, deliver these to your colleagues and it's with a Microsoft, uh, as a, with a Windows uh, operating uh, device, it's not working because maybe the codec, it's not the same. So our, our um, good practice for the first one, it's screen to GIF. We are using screen to GIF, it records, it's a screen recorder, but uh, the output it's animated GIF file. And you, um, you could, uh, yeah, it's, you use this file as a, with a typical, like a typical screen recorder. You, there is this frame where you could uh, frame, yeah, cover the section where you want to record. Uh, if you store these, uh, this, yeah, if you store a result, you have an editor, you could uh, delete, change some frames, uh, um, doing some drawing to highlight some special, uh, yeah, some special areas and so on. And in the end, you could, um, uh, at, yeah, at the end, you could um, fill this uh, animated GIF into uh, yeah your bug tracking tool like Jira, Atlassian Jira, or Azure DevOps, or and it's yeah uh, with the help also it's the most uh, or yeah so like the most or yeah as a, all these tools as all the browser based uh, bug tracking tools show these animated videos which starts by themselves if you open the uh, the the issue or the as a, the artifact as a debug. And it's an easy way to uh, support uh, your bug tracking and to help to uh, yeah to visualize the issue and to uh, support the um, yeah the bug analyzing and the bug fixing. The next thing I want to talk about it's it's X-ray and it's the one-click report. The one also um, you know, I know the, we are we are using Atlassian uh, Jira. And uh, in our Java and uh, web-based projects, we are using uh, Azure DevOps. There are a lot of other tools. I don't, I get no money from um, Xpand or X-Ray or from Jira. So, uh, but yeah, one big thing it's we have to do in our projects is to create reports. I know, as a, Seth, you're working in Azure projects. Yeah, so you will say, oh, report, yeah, a report, yeah, I don't have to do a reports in the Agile project. Yeah, yeah why I have to reports, it's uh, nonsense, it's gone, so we have not to report anything. But it's not true, but uh, sometimes it's, we have to do it, because I told you I'm working for Zeiss, and in the Zeiss proofs, we, uh, Zeiss group, we are working for the Zeiss Medical. And the Zeiss Medical, um, yeah, they, they create medical devices. And medical devices is a little bit different because we are, as they are working, uh, working in agile in agile models too, as they're working with Scrum. But if you want to bring an, uh, a medical device into the market, like uh, America or uh, European Union, for America, you have the FDA and you have to follow a 
big, uh, big, a lot of compliance, a lot of rules to, so you have to go a very tough uh, assessment to bring these products into the market. And uh, one of these compliance is to store everything, all test results, reports, uh, down to the unit tests, 10 years, the results of the unit tests and so on. And you have to create reports and so on. And if, yeah, maybe if you're in the finance sector or in the uh, elect, uh, energy sector, you have to follow these also similar compliance too. So not for all, also, uh, and in, I, I know in the agile way, uh, you have not only to document what's, what's necessary, but sometimes, it's, sometimes you have to follow some compliance and have to do more documentation. And if you have to do this, uh, you could use X-Ray. And uh, this is a reporter, uh, one-click report. You could provide a simple, small uh, template with your logo, with your design here. And uh, the test results in X-Ray are stored in a so-called issue called test execution with all the test cases. And all the results, also this test execution in the uh, normal, as it shows you this dashboard and the normal uh, yeah, Jira X-Ray view, but with the click, one click and with the help of this prepared um, template with all your logos, with your design and so on, uh, with the help of the Jira query language, all this information, also this dashboard, the test results down to the test uh, run results, like uh, all the test cases, the test runs, the, uh, to, down to the comments and uh, screenshots and so on, will be stored and exported in this test report. One click and it's fine. And, um, and you can enhance this thing with the help of this tool too, because sometimes you have some flexible components in this report, you have to change maybe the, uh, the date or the uh, some, some information, some uh, uh, paragraphs and so on. And um, with the help of Confluence, you can fill this flexible content into Confluence and it's uh, included in this template too with one click. And so uh, you have, because, also in the, I, I remember when I was a test manager a long, long time ago. Yeah, long, long time ago. Oh, but I'm old. Uh, so, um, yeah, I have to I, I take all this information from the test management tool, fill it in Excel, uh, 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 yeah, cover, also to try to uh, take the diagrams into a Word document and uh, fill some texts and so on. It's, uh, it was a long time of daily business. And um, yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it takes hours. And um, so we have one click. It's, it's, if you have to do this, it's a good solution. And maybe it's working for other tools too. As we are working with this, it's working, it's fine. Yeah. And so I get no money from Jira. So uh, please, uh, the next uh, example, uh, automated reports for automated tests. It's uh, based on our experience with X-Ray and um, Jira too, because now I, all in all these uh, content inside these uh, uh, these reports are manual as a testing based. Also, uh, but there are some um, automated tests, for example, too. And you have to store it. You have to uh, so, uh, did you document this one to keep it 10 years. And if you run your automated tests, your unit tests, your service tests, uh, uh, the result will be an XML file or JSON file. Yeah, and it looks maybe similar to this one here, as it like this. Uh, it's created with the Surefire plugin with Maven and Jenkins. And it's, yeah, you could see uh, the test names, the uh, test one names, and the how many failures, how many errors, and so on. And, but if you want to include these, also these into your test report, it's, uh, it's possible to do this with X-Ray 2 or with um, Azure DevOps in X-Ray, you could import these test results, uh, JSON-based, also JSON files or X XML files here manual with this import uh, test exec uh, execution results. And you can include this information in these test reports I told you before too. So, um, so you have all your information stored in one report or in one dashboard in one tool. It helps also not only for reporting, uh, it's for uh, to take a look at your current uh, yeah, test results or to get, get an impression, uh, to start the um, get impression of your test results, your test process for your retrospectives and so on. So to have all this information in one uh, tool, it's a good idea. And it's possible to include this via REST RPs and via plugins too. Um, so it's, yeah, 
if you want, if you run a Jenkins, this one is a plugin. Uh, it's a screenshot of the plugin in Jenkins to uh, include, also to if you run your Nike build, all the XML files were directly stored and pushed into the uh, project of uh, X-ray project in here. It's working with uh, G-Unit and test NG and unit uh, robot framework, and it will be more over the years, but, but it's possible with uh, Azure DevOps 2 and other tools. Also, you, you, you could check, also it's all these things I told you, uh, I will tell you, uh, told you uh, tell you today, it's ideas to open your mind, to think about what's possible to uh, do test automation to optimize your pro daily process. And um, I try to open your eyes and maybe some of these ideas will help you. The next thing, it's um, record explorative tests. Um, Seth, Seth uh, what tool uh, will I present you now? <laughs> it's X-ray tool, okay, uh, yeah. Um, but it's based on our, but uh, this thing, it's not reporting, uh, it's test result reporting because it's the idea and um, about explorative testing and session-based testing. Uh, Seth, you're doing uh, session-based testing and explorative testing in your projects too? Usually as part of acceptance, mm -hmm. the developer shows what yep, he did yep, and yep. we go through mm -hmm. it together. Mm -hmm. yep. And do you record the results or it's only uh, yeah, oral or? It's... Barely. I work mm -hmm. in e-commerce yeah. and the mm -hmm. standards are much lower. I don't okay, have to okay. yeah. uh, so, report to yeah, a higher. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you mark the point. Also, it's, it's because uh, we discussed this. Also, we discussed session-based testing, and explorative testing with the colleagues of the size medical, and uh, they told us, "Oh, it's not allowed," because we have to uh, document everything, and documentation means uh, test cases and uh, test run protocols. Also, yeah. Um, but we just uh, we go a little bit deeper in the discussion, and we recognized only the documentation. It's the important thing in the compliance um, and um, so we think we start about uh, we start to think about session-based testing and now uh, we we allowed to do session-based testing uh, with, uh, in our projects for size medical but we have to store the information and not only barely we have to store everything like uh, um, you, now you can as we have to create as we started with the uh, test carta to write down as the session the tool we want to do uh, the environment and so on as we have to store this form, all this information and the results and the things we uh, do and done during the test session and we could as we start with some uh, word based documents templates and the idea was now to do this uh, to find a tool for this and uh, x-ray offers with the version 4 of x-ray uh, expand offers this x-ray explorative tool it's um, and it's a small tool, Mac-based and Windows-based, and uh, you could write down here in the start uh, all the test sessions, also like uh, the environment, uh, the information of the session, the test carta with some notation, annotations, and when you start a test session, it records the time, and, you, and it records all the things like uh, videos, uh, audio, video and audio, you could st start to talk about what you're doing to, um, to uh, optimize the uh, reflection or the information about the, what you've done during the test session. And when you store this information, it's stored as a zip file with the video and the PDF documentation, but that's the USP of this tool. You could connect this tool to the your Jira server and it will push this information, all the results, the videos into the Jira and the Jira, uh, and the Jira test execution. And it's stored uh, and creates some test cases for all the sessions. And so you have all this information in your Jira, but um, you could do use it standalone to store this information. And it will help also it will help you in this way you have to collect the things. But it's not only for the compliance. I told you I'm old man, so I forgot a lot of things. Maybe uh, I think, for, 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 um, yeah, I don't remember what I done uh, last week or so. And if I try to remember, oh, was it working when I tested it? So it's a, the documentation helps you maybe to, if you forget a lot of things or you have a little too busy. And it's not only Jira, also it, it's, uh, there's a similar tool in Azure DevOps. Uh, it's called test and feedback, not with all the functionalities uh, this uh, X-ray tool provides, but uh, is providing, but um, yeah, you could do screenshots, record the sessions, 
uh, eight nodes and both of these tools could uh, they are you are able to create bugs and uh, tasks and during your test session and test cases too so um so next thing um i told you i'm an old man yep and um we started some tests with postman maybe you know postman and um it's an API tool to develop API environment. Also, and you could uh, debug, mock, design, document uh, your APIs, and you could test it too. And if you run these tests, um, you run as you test this one in the Postman uh, uh, tool in the app, or you could run these uh, Postman tests with Newman. It's the commando line tool, and the result of these test runs are. In the commando line, as here in this, uh, in the, here in the, on the screen is a ASCII based uh, table and for all the results. So if you, yeah, for the defects and so on. And yeah, now if you want to collect all this information, you could start with Excel and, as a, and use Excel, but it's not a good idea. So I told you if I want to remember if was this test working three weeks ago, um, it's a good idea to store this information in a better way. And for example, with Postman, uh, you, Newman, as a commando line tool for the collections of Postman, collections are these uh, test containers, test case containers of, post, uh, of Postman. It's Node.js based, so you can, um, you can add some plugins like the so-called Newman Reporter HTML plugin. And it provides the test result or it stores the test results in the HTML file, a standalone HTML file with snapshots and so on. And if you're running these during your nightly builds or if you're running uh, this uh, manual as a start the automation test manual, uh, it stores with, uh, it's stored in a folder with this, uh, with a snapshot and named uh, after your test cases and test runs. And you could take a look at, as it's a detailed view. It's only here part of the uh, of this HTML file. It's a detailed view with this, uh, with this uh, dashboard and with all the details of the test runs with screenshots and so on. And you could uh, take a look. Uh, yeah, you could, uh, you could jump two or three months back and take a look what was it working at this time. And the coolest feature of this thing is it's possible to switch to, yeah, to a light and dark screen. Yeah, for all the colleagues who love this feature. Good. Uh, uh, I, I heard about uh, Microsoft starts to provide a dark uh, theme from Win, uh, for Microsoft Word. Yeah, okay. I don't know who loves this. You could uh, raise the hand, for example. <laughs> okay, good. Um, the next thing uh, I want to discuss with Diego because um, it's about cloud platform and maybe uh, Diego knows uh, companies which provide cloud testing platform for cross browser testing. Um, it's about, um, yeah, we, but my fault is uh, we are using browser stack. I'm so sorry, Diego. We are using browser stack. And uh, I know there are companies, uh, other companies, which providing similar tools and platforms. I, I want to name nothing, yeah, yeah, no names, yeah, okay. Uh, like source labs, for example, yeah. And the idea is um, we have an enterprise license for browser stack and we are using this one for uh, cross browser testing, but um, it's a good idea as with a small change in your test case uh, here, in this case for a Java-based Selenium test to set these capability, capabilities and to change the remote web driver, you can every test is running with a browser stack. And the result is here um, in the cloud of browser stack and the cloud uh, yeah, in the web, on the website, you will find this test runs, all the test steps are named and with the time, with the test results, with um, screenshots and more information and a video is created. Um, I did a talk uh, some years ago about to optimize Selenium tests and I recognized it's, it's really, it's very, have to push uh, to yeah, to create some video recording into a Java-based uh, uh, Selenium tests, and you have to write a lot of things. You have to add some codec and uh, codecs and so on. It's, it's, and here uh, with Cypress as a new tools, it's easier. But uh, you have to think about documentation and so too. But with the help of these small lines, 
and yeah, with the help of this cloud platform, you're able to create videos and you have a website when you can check all your test runs and so on. It's an easy feature to support your uh, documentation. Yeah, and there are other platforms too. And in my opinion, South Labs uh, offers the same functionality. Diego, yeah. Also, you could ask Diego for this one. Also, yeah, yeah, please ask Diego. Good. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, the next thing it's um, automated code coverage for manual testing. And so if you you want to be Code, code coverage, uh, it's not new. Yes, yeah? so you will say, yeah, code coverage, we always do, do code, code coverage in our projects for unit tests and automated tests for. Not, not a fan, but yeah, mostly. <laughs> you, you, sh yeah. You, you shouldn't use it as like the gold standard. If you have 100% mm -hmm. coverage, doesn't mean yeah, it's yeah, a good yeah. project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see, I see. I, I know I know this. So I know a lot of colleagues which trades if, uh, have some they are masters in uh, create some unit testings to cover the uh, the constructor and have 100% uh, code coverage and something like this. It's funny, but you know, code coverage it's for automated testing. But you know, oh, we need ask uh, Axana for the ISDQ Bay terms. Test coverage for manual testing. You have test coverage. You coverage the test coverage for manual testing for test cases. You have uh, the requirements, the stories, um, the features, and based off the stories and the requirements, you create test cases. And maybe if you're using all these, you know, East uh test uh, founding uh, elements like Grenzwertanalyse, uh, it's what's called Grenzwertanalyse in English. Oh, what gets, uh, mm, oh yeah, okay, mm, we need Axana. Okay, uh, you know. And, Boundary uh, value analysis. Ah, cool, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Pierre. Yeah, and uh, as a, with the help of these uh, tools and methods, you, uh, you just try to create 100% 100 uh, uh, test coverage. And code coverage is for white, bay, white, uh, white box test cases uh, or white box test. Yeah, and you run your unit testing, your uh, unit test framework, um, and the tools like Jacoco or dot cover. Uh, take a look at the uh, we have, of, 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 if all the methods or the um, of the if cases and so on yeah, yeah, were handled during your tests. But it's possible to use these tools like Jacoco or dot cover for manual testing too. And uh, you, uh, I show as a, I show you here the result. I have here this. Uh, my application under tests is a small address app. I started here this session. You have to change some entries into in the Eclipse, and uh, you run your manual tests. And afterwards, you uh, after my small test session, I recognized I have uh, yeah I covered fifty uh, about fifty percent yeah. And maybe it's a good idea. Also, <sighs> I don't know. As, um, the, uh, this, the typical situation, or my idea to uh, to use this uh, automation, uh, yeah, these code coverage tools. It's the first step. It's if you think about, you have hundred percent test coverage, yeah, and you run all your hundred test cases, and and uh, you, yeah, you run these automated test tools, and you recognize after your hundred test cases runs, test case runs. Only 80% of that code are covered. What's happened? Um, me, also the, the developers, write, also create all the also all the features, write the code for the features, but they start to think about, oh, maybe this feature is a good idea too. It's not requested, but uh, I will do this. Yeah, and it's a feature. It's included in the code. It's in the application under test. It's in your tool, in your product, and it could uh, lead to bugs. It could, uh, or to destroy data or break down the system or something like this. And, uh, but you, with the help of, so with, yeah, you, as a, you test, as a that manual tester, or uh, say, I'm not to blame. I test everything was what was requested. But yeah, that's one idea uh, of usage of these tools. And the second one, it's, um, as a, the second one, it's uh, to think about session based testing. Yeah, also uh, if you do your session based testing, you could use these tools. Also, here's an other example it's dot cover. Also, it's not only Jacoco for Java, it's other tools like dot cover. And dot cover provides uh, these information and the, uh, and the short uh, manual to run manual testing with uh, um, 
manual tests with, uh, with the dot .cover. Um, also it's a good idea to use this one for uh, session-based testing to run your session based testing, your explorative testing, and take a look afterwards where, how, also, did I, um, also, yeah, what, what was covered during my test, yeah? And there's a uh, third tool, it's the most expensive tool in this case, it's team scale from CQSA, but it's a cool tool, it's, I mean, yeah, it's more, like, it's like a sonar cube, but a little bit more, also, and for example, uh, it's uh, in this way here, or this example, or this picture shows you a tree map with the, um, it shows the changes, also what was changed during the last uh, commit and what was covered with tests, automated, uh, automated and manual tests. Also it's, so maybe it's a good idea to think about, also yeah, to think about use these automated coverage tests for manual testing too. And that's one of these examples um, I told you before, we are testers menu, also, and a lot of, of my colleagues, I told you are uh, carrier changers. We, uh, there's a concierge now working as a, a good, a great uh, test analyst, but uh, with IT background and so on, but um, they know all know the secrets uh, the deliver, developer knows. And so we have to ask our developers, they are tools, they know some special tools and maybe they could help us in our daily testing business too. And uh, maybe you have to think a bit, uh, yeah, um, out of the box to think about uh, to optimize your daily business with tests, as uh, with automated thing, not to automate everything, only what's necessary and what's boring, boring stuff, which uh, keep us apart from the daily testing, as uh, the fine bugs. And here you see a lot of dots um, because maybe you have some own ideas too. Uh, one of these uh, own idea I. Uh, collected in one of my uh, sessions before was a log analyzer. And one uh, um, colleague in the audience told me they are using log analyzing during the test sessions because typical situation, you're running your tests, two hours, yeah, Seth, you're running your tests, not two hours uh, test sessions, yeah, everything works fine. You're interacting with the graphic user interface, now you store your data, everything's fine. After two hours, you take a look into your log file and see a uh, tons of errors, yeah. And now you have to go back and take a look. When was this error? When was as when was this error arise? And uh, what 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 was the task or the test step I done during when this test uh, when this error was shown? And the idea is to yeah to uh, yeah to create a log analyzer. Maybe as you could use a tool or write a Python script or I using a auto hotkey. It's a Windows tool uh, and during my test run, this auto, uh, this log analyzer, take a look into the uh, into the in the log file, and every time a re an error is shown, uh, it, it shows us a message box or a LED signal. I have some special funny small LED uh, stick. I love gadgets, as like and I have some a small LED stick here, and with the help of the small script, it's uh, yeah, it's switch this uh, LED stick to red. And um, yeah, and so I could check the uh, the log file and it's typical situation for, yeah, you run your test case and you store maybe some information and you, no errors shown at the, at the graphical user interface, but there is an error on the log. And so this is a typical situation and this will help you to, yeah, yeah to optimize your daily business. And the last one thing it's, um, yeah, it's, Robot process automation, you know, as a robot process automation, it's a known tool. It's it's for test automation and for optimizing the uh, automate your uh, task uh, in your process. But uh, Microsoft offers uh, Power uh, Automate Desktop. Uh, they, they offered this uh, um, some months ago. It was uh, it's free for uh, free for the usage in Windows 10, and it's a small RPA tool, it's called, as they called it RPA tool, I don't know, it's real APA, but it's uh, you could automate all the Windows tools or the most of the Windows tools. And so could maybe to think about to, opt to clear your environment, to uh, start with, so to optimize your Excel, um, or to write down, so create some macros for Excel to, to start, as so to collect your test data and so on, as so to, 
all these things um, in Windows, you have, you, they are able to automate. So your daily business, they are, you do every time before, after, and after the tests. As a, with the help of this tool, maybe it's a good idea to automate this one. That, yeah, okay. These are, yeah, okay. These are the ideas I want to show you. As it is uh, some lot of ideas and uh, maybe we are able to use it, but the idea, so, but I'd want to open your mind to think about, uh, is it possible to do to automate some boring things to uh, ask the developer and say okay or you are a developer and uh, think about how to support my tester and um, I create uh, I uh, I will offer this uh, I will send you the PDF afterwards and so you could uh, add this PDF with the links and um, you could try to uh, check these tools I told you they are the tools are only examples. There are other alternatives. You could, as a, I don't, I, I told you, I get no money from the companies. And so, 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 yeah, yeah. so um, these only examples. And um, yeah, if maybe I have, um, yeah, it supports you to open your mind for this uh, topic, uh, automation and testing. And if you have some ideas, uh, you could send me these information, some feedback and, um, yeah, maybe we could share some ideas uh, now in the question and answer session. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Very cool talk. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the format. Very cool, very practical. Um, my setup is totally different, but um, the ideas totally make sense regardless of what frameworks you're using. Mm -hmm. um, Aurelian, do you want to ask your question? We still have no, no, just, just, uh, just, uh, yes, I, I just because I, I logged out and I, I forget my question, I cannot. See <laughs> uh, you, were, you were asking, <laughs> let, let yeah, yeah, that's why, that's why I, I spoke about a lot, lot of things about documentation, yeah, yeah, of course. Yes. As maybe you are young, but uh, yes, yes. but uh, that's the same thing for me as I'm, I'm old, I forgot everything, so I have to know. I, this as a, hmm. I actually documented mm -hmm. your question mm -hmm. in my Obsidian. It's a, a markdown based mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, tool that I use mm -hmm. for note uh, mm -hmm. keeping, uh, which is also compatible with, compatible with um, the Atlassian mm -hmm. tools. So the formatting mm -hmm. I put in here can also be copy and pasted. Mm -hmm. So that was my recommendation. So uh, Aurelian, your question was, um, is Yakoko specific to a language or framework? Uh, Yakoko is, uh, it's Java, also Java, also it's the acronym for Java Code Coverage. But uh, so it's for Java, but uh, .cover and uh, the tools behind uh, um, JetBrains are also .cover, it's for .net and uh, there are other tools. And um, these both examples, I know these both examples are working with, with manual testing, but maybe there are other tools working uh, with manual testing too. Also I, uh, I didn't check it. But uh, both as a Jacoco and dot cover, I was checking, but uh, yeah, also, yeah, in my opinion, independence on also these tools, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, team scales, for example, you could, uh, if you have this uh, license, there are some manual and blog posts to the, uh, yeah, to show how to record on not only the automated test, the manual test, so, and to include it into the uh, information. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oman, do you want to share your recommendation? Oh, uh, yeah. So, um, can you hear me? Yep. Um, yeah, um, I'm using uh, Sentry, which is uh, very good, m mostly for uh, recording exceptions in the code, but also it saves a lot of data uh, related, like all the, all the whole mm -hmm. stack. And then another good one is uh, full story, which is for recording uh, the whole user, all user interactions mm -hmm. in the website. You can select like which uh, domain and so on. And uh, I think the best mm -hmm. part is actually you can actually integrate them together. So mm -hmm. if you get an exception reported in the code, then you can link it uh, directly to what the user, user was doing, you can analyze, mm -hmm. uh, rec replay all, all their actions mm -hmm. on, on the website. So. Okay, so it's recorded. So if you, 
okay, also so if you do your test run, um, the exceptions as, or the log, also the log entries are um, connected to your test runs, also test uh, steps also. Yeah, so the exceptions oh, are logged mm. uh, okay. by mm. uh, if I do the test or anyone mm. is doing anything on the website. Uh, okay. And then it's... I can actually replay from the full story all the interactions. Um, if, cool. you know, so I don't really need to record anything like video. I can then replay from full story and record video there uh, separately. But I think it's most powerful when you integrate them together because mm. you have like production side and mm. uh, you get an exception. It's uh, hard to debug mm. like what actually happened. But then mm. when you have all the steps that the user did, it's uh, could help a lot. That's a pretty cool example, pretty cool good practice and example. And I will use this one in my talk <laughs> because it's one of these three dots, or it's a it's a, a extension of the uh, uh, log file analyzer because that's one of these things uh, which supports you during your daily business. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Thank you, Roman. Um, I wanted to add a small recommendation. Mm -hmm. It's a very mm -hmm. small tool uh, for recording uh, GIFs on. Mac. Mm -hmm. It's called Gifox. Uh, it doesn't allow you things like your cool mm -hmm. tool where you can mm -hmm. edit individual frames. But the, the upside is it's very mm -hmm. quick to use. You can decide mm -hmm. the resolution and things like that. And it's also mm -hmm. very easy to just create a, mm -hmm. create a new uh, GIF mm -hmm. and just drag it right into your report mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the browser yeah. and it will mm -hmm. go over there really quickly. It's very easy to use. I can recommend it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. And I had one uh, question. Um, mm. Just to get an idea, how mm. much data do you produce in a year? If you have to keep that stuff for like oh. 10 years, <laughs> I, oh, I, 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 I assume it's a bigger <laughs> consideration of which tool you use just based on the cost of storage and things um, like that. I don't know, but they, maybe there are some uh, reports or some um, collection because there is their own rule. Also there's their own rule for these so-called uh, documentation. Also, I don't know the name, oh, I forgot the name, but there's their own rule in the process for these, um, yeah, for the for the guys or the girls and so which doing this documentation. And um, and they collect a lot of things and they have to store it in, on, not on disk or something because it's gone as a, so for the 10 years. Also, I, I have no experience or I don't knowledge about it, but it's, it's, it's a funny question because I have to ask. Yeah. yeah so when you introduce a new tool, they suffer. Mm. Okay, so it's mm. not your problem. So it's, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it, it's not, maybe it's some terabyte or something like this. Yeah, yeah. Because you have to document everything. Also, yeah. And to keep okay. and store everything. Mm. Thank you very much. Anyone else has any questions? Mm. Um, not so much a question, maybe, mm. Mm. but rather um, kind of a weird recommendation. Um, when it comes to automate, automate, automating, you also talked in the beginning a bit about test data, mm. which is always a pain. Um, but I, I myself um, am on the other side with um, mm. being a developer. But um, as a QA person, I mm. think it's important to remember that developers are also super lazy. Yeah. So yeah. if they use um, some mm. kind of test data for integration tests, mm. um, it would probably be easy to get them to mm. um, get you some interface, some mm. API where you can create the same test data with some manual control mm. and create big sets of test data instead of having it to do it manually because we as engineers probably have some implementation code for creating test data anyway. I forgot this. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good point. And uh, that's a good point and an additional point in my documentation because I know some examples, but I didn't, I forgot them. But I, I become old. Okay. Okay. Good. I have to note more. Uh, yeah. As this, I know some examples in our company, we in our project, from our projects, we, uh, the developers started to create some test case, uh, some test data uh, for the test cases. Uh, for their own and they enhance these for the other tests too. It's uh, Anya, thank you very much for this example and this, uh, uh, this, um, uh, room. okay, now I forgot. Reminder, uh, no. you're welcome. Reminder, <laughs> reminder, yeah, thank, thank you. Yeah, that's, th yeah, thank you very much. That's a good point. Yeah, that, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. But this wasn't like a tool. This is just like a general rule. Talk to your developers. They can mm -hmm. probably help you out. With... Yep. Yes, because and, we really is lazy yeah. as fuck. 
um, yep. mm. and why not use mm -hmm. what is already probably already mm. existing mm. and ex enhance mm. it a bit for the QA yep. people. I, I have I have one example. Also, I was working for um, for I don't want to talk. Uh, it was the European Energy Exchange in Leipzig. It's the uh, maybe all you know this one in Germany because the European Energy Exchange is responsible for collect uh, for calculating the EEG umlage. Uh, we, you have to pay at the end, yeah, and. Um, the, the colleagues, also the, the developers, create some tools for to fill some uh, yeah, stock-based energy uh, data, and with one click to for your data. And they, are, also we didn't know this, and we recognized this one, and we uh, we were we are using this one in our uh, stages and our test stages too, because they're using this on the dev stage, and we're using this in our test stages too. It's a beautiful example. Thank you very much, Anja. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And very often it's not tool based. It's it's a small script the developers start to create, and with the next steps, with the next version, a uh, user interface is created with the buttons and so on, with some some configuration thing, and so it it, it and becomes a monster afterwards. Yeah, own tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good example. Yeah, good. Thank you very much. Anyone mm -hmm. else got any questions? Okay, then. I will wrap it up. Of the light a little bit. It becomes dark here. Interesting. Good. Mm. Mm. All right. So, mm. uh, slides. Yes. Mm. So, thank you, Kai. Mm. Um, just as a reminder, uh, we have a website, continuoustestingmeetup.com. And in about, let's say, a week or two, you will find the recording mm. of this session. And uh, if you shared the, the slides or the, the links uh, from the end with us, we can also provide them there. Um, you can also see upcoming events and things like that. And so upcoming event, uh, the next one is from Simon Pryor uh, from EasyJet, growing a culture of quality. So I hope I will see you there and uh, thank you very much. And thanks again uh, to Kai and for the, all, all your great uh, questions and suggestions and I wish you a nice evening. Goodbye.